Hey there and welcome to another edition of Unrolling the Roller. Today we're going to start going through gun setups and what I've found to work the best on different setups ranging from a 900 all the way to a 130. Today we start off with the 900, one of my favorite all-time guns. This gun is a fantastic grief gun, although I have managed to shoot some really good fish with this little 900. Before we start talking about different shafts and rubber setups, the biggest thing to consider with a 900 or any small roller gun is its weight and buoyancy in the water. First of all, without the shaft, the gun needs to float. So that straight away eliminates most aluminum barrels. You pretty much have to go carbon. You also want to steer away from guns with small IDs like your 25 mil ID. That just means that everything else on the gun has to be extremely light for that gun to float. Second of all, on the, along the same lines, you can't put seven and a half mil shafts. Sometimes you can put a seven mil. Most of the times a 6.6 .6 is gonna be what you're gonna put onto a, a 900 purely because of that buoyancy. Otherwise the gun is way too heavy in the water. I don't know if you've noticed, but roller guns, because of the muzzle, there's uh, little steel shafts and ceramic bearings and you land up with pretty muzzle heavy guns. When you go 900, that is just accentuated even more. So first things first, if you've got a 900, you pretty much have to go carbon. There's no way around it. The gun has to float uh, when the spear's out. And you also don't want the gun to be too negative in the water. On a spear gun, your handle, your reel, and your muzzle are pretty much the same, whether it's an 800, 900, 130. So that weight is consistent. But the buoyancy of your barrel is not 130. It's only in... 90 centimeters. The shaft covers pretty much the barrel the whole way, whether it's a 90 or a, a 130, and then your overhang is pretty much the same. It's always going to be about um, 30 centimeters or so, depending on your preference. Again, remembering roller guns, pretty much the shorter your overhang, the better the gun's going to operate. So you've got all these components that are pretty much the same weight. So when you go down in size, you lose your buoyancy in the water, your balance in the water. So with the lack of buoyancy in a 900, it's going to limit you to either a 6.6 .6 or a 7 mil shaft, depending on your preference and where you're diving. Now, if you're only shooting a 6.6 .6 mil shaft or even a 7 mil shaft, there's no need to have um, 16 mil bands. 14 mil bands are more than enough. And that means that, you know, being a short gun, you can hand load it nice and easy, and you can have your um, muzzle load around about 18 kilos. Over here, full load about 30 kilos, and this gun is an absolute weapon. I haven't found too many people that have been unhappy with the 14 mil bands and the light shaft setup. Some guys in like California or places where it's really cold, I know the guys tend to then go up to 16 mil bands because the rubber doesn't react the same way. But this is more of a, an exception than the rule. Even then, I found many guys are still happy with the 14 mil bands. But if you, do, if you are diving somewhere super cold, I'm talking sort of 10, de, 10 to 14 degree C kind of water, you might want to go up to a 16 mil band. Let's talk specifics about the setup. On a 900, your shaft's going to be 1.3 meters long. That's for your standard overhang. I wouldn't go longer than that. Preferably a 6.6 .6 mil shaft, especially if you're just targeting um, reef species. I know some guys like um, in the Eastern Cape of South Africa where the guys are shooting white muscle cracker. The guys use a 7 mil shaft. It's just got a little bit more punch. Most of the time, those fish are shot in close range, so then. They don't need as much range, they need more punch. So that's where the seven wall shaft comes in. Although I've shot a black muscle cracker with this exact gun and 6.6 .6 mil shaft, I had absolutely no problem. I stoned the fish from a fair good distance away, went through all the scales. I mean, this setup really works well. Okay, next rubbers. I wanna introduce you to a little formula which I apply to all my roller guns. It makes working out the rubber lengths really, really easy. Pretty much the length from your, your loading lugs around the roller to your notch is double your um, barrel length. So if you divide your barrel length in half, you're going to land up with um, a measurement that will give you exactly 400% stretch. 
This is a little bit extreme, especially if you're hand loading. I found that around about 340 to 370 is where you want to be aiming. So I normally add on five to 10 centimeters onto my rubber and then just see how it loads. On a small gun like this, a five, cent five centimeters extra, so making this rubber 50 centimeters should be perfect. You should just be able to load the gun without too much effort. Then your setup is, is pretty spot on. You don't want to be seeing stars when you load your gun. Softer rubber, make it 45 centimeters harder rubber, make it more towards 55 centimeters. And if it's easy to load, just trim off a centimeter at a time until you get to that point where the gun's um, just difficult to, um, to get off the muzzle and easy to load on the notch. That way you'll, you'll be getting the maximum out of the gun. Let's just go over a few other little things on this gun. The reason why I've got this old gun is I wanted to show you, here's an old mini sub, but it's still using old acetyl bearings. I know they're not as strong or as efficient as the ceramic bearings. On a low volume gun like this, the extra weight of the ceramic bearings didn't warrant the extra five or 10% in performance. And um, you know, because these bands aren't putting so much pressure on these bearings, they've lasted no problem at all. So that's why I have acetyl bearings. I know this comes up all the times. I'm a massive, massive, massive proponent of um, ceramic bearings. They're just the way forward. They're robust, they, they're just better. But on this specific gun, um, just to cut the weight down, I kept the bearings as uh, acetyl bearings. And uh, here's just something for free. You might have noticed on the back of this gun, I have what I call a sneaky stringer. It's a 50 centimeter stainless steel cable, which is attached to your shark clip, the big loop here where the um, swivel is. And all you do is you slide that through the back of the gills of the fish out the mouth, clip that on, on here, and then your, your fish will be here. And that's primarily for when you when you're boat diving or in a compet competitive situation where you don't want to uh, let guys see that you've got fish so you can quietly shoot a fish, keep your gun under your legs so that they can't see the gun on the surface, string your fish quietly on there, load up again, do another dive, get another fish um, without some, somebody coming and uh, diving on your honey pot. This is also helpful if you boat diving and there's a current and uh, the boat's maybe um, a little bit way away you don't have to either call the boats over or swim to the boats. You can just quickly string your fish. But this is specifically for spots where you know, sharks aren't an issue. So just to recap, on your 900, you're going to go for a 6.6 .6 or 7 mil shaft at 1.3 meters long. The rubbers are going to be 14 mils at about 50 centimeters, maybe 55 if you've got really hard rubber. If your rubber's a little soft and you're finding it easy to load, Trim it down, you can go all the way down to 45 centimeters. Don't use a 7.5mm shaft. The gun's just going to be really heavy in the water. If you're not using a 7.5mm shaft, there's no point in going 16s. This amazing little gun doesn't need to be super powerful. It's just so sweet the way it is. I hope that you guys can get your guns to work just as well as I've got mine to work. If you have any comments or questions or any hassles with your setup, please just bond them in the comments below. and. Hope to see you soon. See you in the next episodes. Cheers. Thanks for watching.